I'll be discussing about time domain or transient analysis. In fact, I'm going to build a half wave RC triggering circuit and show you the results and we'll explain time domain analysis based on the half wave RC triggering circuit. So let us start by building the circuit first. I'm going to launch the capture CIS application. I'm going to create a new project. I'll name it as RC triggering. I make sure it is of type P space analog or mixed AD. I'll change the folder. So I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop. I'll say RC trig. I make sure it is selected. Right. So now everything is fine. So let us start. Here I'll once again select the option for create a blank project. Press OK again. You will then be redirected to the schematic page. So, I'll start by placing parts. I'll start by V sign. Then I'll place the load resistor. So, R analog followed by the R minimum followed by the variable resistor. And you can select the variable resistor by searching R underscore VAR. Select the R variable analog rotate it and place it here followed with the capacitor so c analog rotate it again okay we need two diodes i'll we'll go for d1n 4002 select one is connected across the r minimum and variable resistor And another one is connected across the capacitor and the thyristor gauge. So finally, we'll place the thyristor 2N1595. Select, rotate it, and place it here. Right. So all my components are placed. Let me just rename the components. So this will be the load resistance RL. And let the value of it be 100 ohms. This will be the R minimum. And its value be 220 ohms. This will be the variable resistor. So I will call it as R variable. And let it range between 0 to 5k. So, the maximum value is 5k and that is what I am supposed to give. Coming to the capacitor, I will rename it as C. And let the value of the capacitor be 47 microfarad. Right? Yes. So, coming to the supply, I will take the offset as 0 amplitude as 20 volts frequency as 50 hertz and ac component i don't want so i'll delete it it's of no use to my experimentation right so all the components are properly placed let us start wiring now Right, I'll place the ground terminal as well to complete the connection. Having constructed the circuit, let us now continue to construct a simulation profile. So, go to PSPICE menu, select new simulation profile, and give a name there. So, I'll say RC triggering create. Click on the pop up window. Now, here we make sure the type of the analysis is time domain or transient and in the general settings, you need to give the values for how long you want to run the simulation for, what is the starting time to start the simulation and what is the step size 
so that the resolution can be computed. Now, since the frequency of the input AC is 50 hertz, I'll run it for three cycles, which will give me 60 milliseconds. Let the start time be 0 and the step size be 0 0.01. Apply, press OK. Now, before I run the simulation, I'll place some markers so that when I run the simulation, the waveforms will automatically appear. I don't have to put trace again and again. So, go to the voltage differential, put it across the supply. Now, when you put the differential marker, make sure the positive marker is connected to the positive terminal of the object across which you want to measure the voltage. I'll put two more markers here, one across the load, another one across the thyristor. Right, let me save it and run the profile. Right, so when the output window appears, you can see we have three different waveforms. This is for the supply, this is for the load resistor and lastly this is across the thyristor. Now what has happened is let me just only concentrate on input and output. So let me eliminate the thyristor waveform here, right. So the blue color waveform what you are looking at, let me just make it a little thick. Right, so this is our input and I'll make the same for the output waveform here. The black waveform is for the output. Now what is happening is in the positive half cycle of the input supply, the output voltage is almost zero, which means the thyristor hasn't triggered at all. This could be because of many reasons such as a design flaw, maybe because the value of the variable resistor is too large and therefore the capacitor is not reaching the minimum threshold voltage to trigger it. We will come back to that a little later. What is also very important here is in the negative half cycle, the load voltage is supposed to be completely zero. Now, what is happening here is that it is not in fact the ideal waveform. So, in order to rectify the issue, I will go back to the circuit and I will change the value of the capacitor because it looks pretty large. I will make it as 5 microfarad and see if the voltage across the negative half cycle has eliminated. Right. So now you can see the voltage across the load has reduced by large amounts. So, but still we will see some voltage is appearing across the negative off cycle. Let me just reduce it to 1 microfarad. Right. So here what is happening is the voltage across the load in the negative off cycle is completely zero. This in fact is what is expected across the load during the negative off cycle. What we will now do is we will plot the waveforms across the multiple components in separate plots. So starting from the supply voltage, let there be no change in that. We also have the load voltage and then we have the voltage across the thyristor. And very importantly, since this is a RC triggering, I will try to plot the voltage across the capacitor as well. Because it is the instant at which the capacitor reaches the gate threshold voltage of the thyristor that it is triggered. So, voltage across the capacitor is a very important parameter here. Let me rerun the simulation. Right. So, here let us separate the waveforms into different plots. I will start by creating a new plot. So, add plot. Let me move the supply voltage here. I will now move the voltage across the thyristor to this plot and this in fact is the load voltage. Capacitor voltage is not included, so I will create another plot here and here I will add the trace for the capacitor voltage which is Vc1. Right. So what has happened is the voltage across the capacitor is pretty small, so for this particular window, I will change the values of the y axis because anyhow what is important here is the instant at which the thyristor is triggered. So go to plot, axis settings, y axis and it is ranging currently from minus 20 to plus 20. So let me eliminate that plus 20 and change it to 2 volts. Press OK. Again, the negative voltage is making it very hard for us to see the triggering pulse. 
So I'll eliminate the negative voltage also. Right. So as you can see, this is the instant at which the voltage across the capacitor becomes equal to the gate threshold value of the thyristor. So you should note the gate threshold value is somewhat equal to the threshold value of the thyristor plus the threshold value of the diode. And for this diode, it is equal to 0 0.67 and it could be somewhere around 0 0.5 to 1.5. So for the experiment, what we have, it is around 1.2 volts. So the overall threshold voltage of the diode as well as the thyristor combined together is 1.2. And when the voltage across the capacitor becomes equal to 1.2 volts, the thyristor will be triggered. Most often what we do, we always overlap the voltage across the thyristor and the voltage across the capacitor into a single platform. So in order to do that, I will eliminate this plot and this is our thyristor voltage. So I will add the trace for the capacitor voltage which is Vc1 into the same plot where the thyristor waveform is shown. Right, so since this is not very clearly visible, I will eliminate the other two plots so that we can analyze what is happening across the thyristor and capacitor. The blue colored waveform what you are looking at is the voltage across the thyristor and the black colored is the voltage across the capacitor. So let me just change the thickness of these waveforms. Right, so when the voltage across the capacitor becomes equal to that of the gate threshold voltage of the thyristor, the thyristor is triggered. So before that point, the voltage across the thyristor is equal to that of the supply. So in order to show that, I will also add the trace for the supply voltage, which is Vv1 plus. This is our input voltage waveform. So you can see as long as the voltage across the capacitor is less than the gate threshold voltage of the thyristor, the thyristor voltage follows that of the input. So this is what is happening here. When the voltage across the capacitor becomes equal to the gate threshold, the thyristor is triggered and immediately the voltage across the thyristor becomes equal to the ohmic drop across the same, which is usually around 0.5 to 1 volt. In the negative half cycle, however, the voltage across the thyristor is exactly equal to that of the supply because it is open circuited. On the other hand, the voltage across the capacitor charges to the negative peak value and depending upon the value of the discharging constant, it will once again charge towards zero and this time may vary as per the values of your R and R variable. For example, I will change the value of the R variable here to 7K, so which is supposed to reduce the rate of charging of the capacitor and thereby increase the value of the triggering angle or the delay angle of the thyristor. So the output voltage will be in an average sense less than what it was when the value of R variable was 5k. So let us simulate it. I will change the thickness and colors now. Right. So now as you can see, I have four different waveforms here. The first one which is the blue colored one is the input. Then we have the red one which is the thyristor waveform. Then we have the black one which is the load waveform. And lastly the green one is the capacitor voltage waveform. So we understand that when I change the value of the variable resistor, the triggering angle is varied. So as the triggering angle is varied, the value across the output voltage is also varied and therefore you get some control over the average output voltage. And therefore, a thyristor is sometimes called as a control device. The capacitor, if you look at this particular waveform now, is in fact taking more time to discharge from minus peak value to 0 volts. So therefore, the value of alpha in fact has increased here. So you can just look at the first time where the alpha is there and the second time where the alpha is there. The value of alpha for the second time is a little greater and this in fact is what should be taken as the value of alpha. Right? So, because it will hold on to the same value for the rest of the input cycles. So, finally what we conclude is that it is the value of the variable resistor R which enables the control over the load voltage. So, we conclude that the value of alpha is the control parameter and by varying the value of alpha across the thyristor, we can control the voltage across the load.
Now we also note that the variation across the value of alpha is brought upon by the rate at which the capacitor is charging to the gate threshold voltage. Now this rate is in fact determined by the variable resistor R. So if I want to plot a graph between the alpha and the load voltage, it is the same as plotting a graph between the variable resistor and the load voltage. Let us now try to do that by changing the simulation profile. Now, when you come to the simulation profile, you see you do not have a parameter to vary the resistance. So, another way is to create a parameter that represents the variable resistance and then vary that parameter because when you look at the simulation profile, we have what is called as a parametric sweep, right. So, this may help us to understand the variation between the load voltage and the variable resistance value. So, in order to do this, I will go back, I need to create a parameter. So, go back to the library which is the place part and search for param, P A R A M. You will see there is a param slash special, double click, place somewhere on your schematic. If you want to transfer the characteristics of R variable into the parameter, you need to go here, double click on the value of the variable resistance and give it a name within the flower brackets which is mandatory. So, I will call it as R variable, the same name as the resistor has. It, it has to be mandatorily within the flower brackets that is very important, press ok. Now, come back to the parameter, double click on that. Here, you need to add a new property to the resistor. So, click on the new property. The name has to be the same as what you have given R variable and the value of the property can be the maximum value what we had given 5k. So, press apply. Now, search for the column which reads a new property, select that, select the display, select name and value and press ok here. Now, you can close this, right, you see now the parameters are R variable equals to 5k, right. Now, having created the parameter, we can go to the pSpice, select edit simulation profile. Here you select the parametric sweep option. Now, the type of the parameter you have created is a global parameter. To so select the global parameter under the sweep variable, give the name of the parameter which is R underscore VAR. And here you can give the start and end values. For example, I will start from let us say 5k and I will continue till 10k and I will increment it in terms of 500 ohms. Apply this, press OK. Now you can run the simulation. As you can see, it is a nested operation. So, it is going to take some time. Then you can press OK here. So, as you can see from this particular graph that the thyristor is triggered multiple times at a different values of R starting from 5k till 10k. Now, as the value of R is small, the time taken by the capacitor to charge to the threshold voltage of the thyristor is fast and the value of alpha will be low. As the value of the variable resistor increases, the time taken by the capacitor to charge to the gate threshold voltage of the thyristor increases and therefore, the triggering angle also increases. So, what we understand from the variation of alpha, lesser the value of alpha, higher will be the average output voltage. For example, if alpha is actually defined by this line, then the output voltage starts from here till the end of the half cycle. So, it is quite large as compared to the last line here because here the output starts from this line and ends here. So, the area covered under the curve for a value of alpha which is less will be more than when the value of alpha is high. So, that is why we say the average output voltage is controlled by the value of alpha, right. So, that is about the discussion on time domain analysis using RC triggering circuit. If you like this video, kindly like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.